Tovey. Uh, sends quite a reasonably long one in, but it is cut out by Poulton. But actually, well won there by... Well, I thought it was well won by, um, by, by Poulton Rovers, but um, Bath have got the, uh, the free kick, which they take quickly, much to the annoyance of the referee who calls it all back, wants things done in an orderly manner. I think, actually, he wants to have a chat with one of the Poulton Rovers players who uh, he's taken... He's taken offence to. What did you make in your playing days of the pitch here then, Mark? It seems to go through spells, to be honest. I know that the, the filers who are the grains men up here work very hard on it. Um, but it, again, at this stage of the season, it, it's, it becomes very, very bouncy. Obviously, there's not a lot you can do because not long ago there was a, a game called off because of waterlog, probably two weeks, three weeks ago. And since then, it's just been obviously dry with loads of frost and now the pitch is rock hard and it's... Again, it becomes a bit of a leveller, I think. Uh, again, uh, uh, again, not to put anything against the team that I had at Dane at Welton, but definitely in the latter stages of that competition, when we were getting home, we had home games, we had Porton at home, um, we had um, Yeovil at home. Um, it definitely levelled it up, um, cause, just because of the state of the pitches, to be honest. And Porton, of course, will be more used to playing on this surface than, well, than pretty much anybody else who comes in, but particularly a side that plays two divisions above. Yeah, yeah, correct. But uh, to be honest, uh, again, I, I think if you, you're a good footballer, you should be able to play on anything, even though, it, as I said, it becomes a bit of a leveller. And saying that, Bath City, since the goal, I think they took complete control of the game, to be honest, um, passing it around very nicely. Um, and again, it's a completely different techniques com- compared to, to Port and Porton are more direct, getting that straight up to... Um, James Billings and Joe Bushin uh, Bath City are taking a bit longer to uh, build their attacks um, and it's good seeing two different styles of play and of course one of the charges that you had on the day when you won the, um, the Somerset Cup um, James Bridges is on display this evening playing for Porton at number 11 uh, yeah Steve Bridges yeah Steve Bridges had two yeah, James, yeah, yeah. yeah well, you had James, James Billings was playing as well there was two of them so yeah the, um, yeah it, they both done well that night to be honest Steve Bridges worked himself into the ground and had to come off and uh, I think James Billings was carrying a hip injury by the end and couldn't take a penalty. Well, I say couldn't take a penalty. I think he um, he went out a bit of a, a little bit. He could have had the winning penalty, but decided not to take it. Be interesting to see how the, the Billings Bridges combination and what a band they were um, get on this evening. As uh, we've got a we've got a throw in, I think it is for um, for Bar City over here on this um, uh, for Porton, absolutely uh, for for Porton on the on the left hand side. Midway into the bath half over here on this on this left hand side, so uh, taken there, just up to the edge of the box. That was Billings, but taken by Davidson. Davidson will get another bite of the cherry, in pretty much exactly the same position. Uh, the seconds are, are ticking by, of course, in this uh, in this second half. Uh, bath have won the ball and will will look to bring it away. Um, they do so, getting it up to the Poulton half, but it was one in the air by Mapston. Uh, Bridges now on the ball for Poulton Rovers, and it's gone out off of a off of a Bath player, number two Bowman. So Poulton will have another throw in, and uh, which they take a bit quicker now. It's Bushin now. Bushin's turned ever so well. He puts in a, a long shot, and I think he could have done a little bit better than there. At, at, actually, I think he wanted to get the shot off quickly. I mean, it was there was a bit of power in there, but I think he wanted to do perhaps something a little bit more elaborate in trying to place it round the goalkeeper because from that distance, uh, Mella had a very good look at it. Um, but um, Porton's still very much in this game. But I think Andrew, would you agree with Mark's assessment that um, perhaps as, as the as the equaliser has gone in and the game has gone on, Bath have played themselves more into this game? Yeah, I think Mark's exactly right. Porton started the brighter of the two sides, much more even now, and Bath really gained a little bit more control. There was. The most enormous grunt a minute ago from Jason Meller because his uh, radar from his kicking, definitely a bit off beam tonight. He's just put two into touch on the right-hand side, so he elected to go over to the left and heaves that one straight into touch as well. And it was a, a noise of enormous frustration. Meller, such a superb young keeper, but uh, his one flaw to his game really is his clearances and his goal kicking. City's defence again there, caught ball watching and then a little bit of handball, which uh, the referee deigned not to notice. And uh, City bring the ball forward again. We've only got uh, about three to four minutes before we get to half time. With a bit of stoppage, I think, from, from, that, from that injury. Um, but um, yes, so still time for either side to go in here with a lead at half time, um, which I think both managers would dearly love to have. Um, Davidson, I don't know, I think we may have had some industrial language from the pitch there, which we apologise if any listeners pick that up. But um, 
This is a full bloody cup to after all. And Bath have got the ball into the Porton box. Bryce is on the ball. He's trying to get the ball away. He's just managed to get it up to Osman. Osman dispossessed. Um, but no, he's not. Jeffries now brings it forward for Porton. Out to Bushin. Bushin trying to twist and turn on the halfway line. Gets it back to Jeffries. Jeffries going forward. Rides one challenge, but not the second. Bath now bring it away. Um, still, still the ball. The ball's still in the Bath half. But Bath have now got it up into um, Porton's half. Mapston's going to track back and make sure that this one um, doesn't get as far as uh, Kerry Morgan. And Mapston now brings it back. Slowed the game right down, shown in his experience. Bush, um, yes, now that's Billings who's on the ball just inside the, in, the, in the bath half, but uh, dispossessed the ball, goes back into Paulton's half, but it will be Paulton who, get the, uh, uh, Paulton who get the throw in. So everything to play for still here at Winterfield Road. <clears throat> Been very impressed with Carl Phillips, the Paulton goalkeeper. The goal was no fault, but uh, two or three times he's had to come off his line fairly sharply uh, and has done so. One superb run for a ball that he took right on the edge of his box and a good throw downfield. He... Just as much as we were praising Mello, I think he also looks good and uh, right on the attack there with uh, Joe Buston. James Bridges. I know James. Bridges. I keep on doing that, James Billings. Steve Bridges. <laughs> It was Steve Bridges, wasn't it? It was Bridges, Steve Bridges, yeah, yeah. wasn't it? Bridges. I, 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 it wasn't Wayne Bridges. Could have been Bo Bridges by the time I, by the time I finished. No, that was definitely um, that was definitely Steve. He'd, uh, we, I think if he'd just wrapped his foot a little bit more around that through ball into the sort of a bouncing effort in the box, just get it on target because he got himself in a wonderful position. And he, Paulton had done had done well in that attack. Again, crept between the two bar centre halves. Neither of them really picking him up and. Uh, probably Polton's best goal-scoring opportunity since they actually scored that first goal through Billings after eight minutes. Anyway, a, a, a ball up into the, um, the into the bath half. as a sloppy back pass there by Bushin, but actually the ball fall by Davidson towards um, Steve Bridges. Cut out there by Billings. Um, Bridges, is, I think he's got the ball in play. No, he hasn't. And we're, wait, we're, all looking, we're all looking for the linesman then, and everyone's managed to fall out with him again, including, um, including yeah, Kerry Morgan for Bath City. So, uh, poor chaps, really not. He's not having a good day at the office. Anyway, we, we, won't, we won't dwell on that. There's Paul and take a quick throw. They've got it up to Bushin. Bushin it's just um, he's qu- very deep into the bar city half. He's trying to get it into the box. He manages to get into the box. What a wonderful little trickery! Oh, he ricochets off a of Rollo, um, but that it was a wonderful step over. I think that was a Cruyff turn. Uh, I've never commentated on one of them before at Winterfield Road. Um, what a player! <laughs> anyway, um, Tovey launches a long ball forward. Um, boot was pretty high actually, but the referee didn't penalise that. And um, Port- Bar City still got some defending to do. Um, Porton really up for it in the closing stages of this game, um, and the referee's seen something he didn't like there. Did, did you did you see what that was, Andrew? Um, I think it was a handball, the oh. ball rebounding off his hand. But uh, yes, yeah, a nice little turn in the box. I, it was certainly intentional. I have to say the ball ran slightly in his favour, so it was slightly more of a Crofts turn than a Cruyff turn. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> nonetheless, impressive to see. Yeah, well worth, well worth the entry fee here tonight at Winterfield Road as Cannon um, keeps possession just on the halfway line for Bath. Bath bringing it forward through Ball. And Ball keeps on his run, but it's one there in the tackle by Tovey. Um, Porton haven't retained possession though now. And uh, uh, it's going to be Chris Allen, a long ball forward there towards um, Morgan. But uh, that one's shepherded out of play by Davidson. And so it's going to be um, Carl Phillips who will get the opportunity to... Um, uh, take a goal kick and calm things down a little bit here as I think everyone's getting ready for half time I did realise quite early on in this game that I had chosen exactly the wrong seat to sit in because the uh, speaker from the Tannoy completely obliterates the entire goal so uh, for every goal kick all I can see is just a pair of boots coming towards the ball with no sight of any goalkeeper whatsoever but uh, as Bath City fans would know that's scarcely likely to impede any footballing knowledge on my part (laughs) one of the pleasures of have the uh, the press box up here at uh, at Winterfield Road as um, ball played up to uh, it's Bar- uh, Porton have got it and it's gone out just on halfway and it's going to be a Bar City throw seconds are, are ticking by as um, Bowman is going to is going to take this take this throw for Bath gets the ball. Up Mapston. Mapston wins it in the air, but Bowman gets a second bite at the cherry with the cross. He puts it across the um, front of the, uh, of the penalty box, but easily cleared by Porton up to the halfway line. And uh, Bushin couldn't win it on that occasion. Bath have got it back and have put a probing ball forward looking for um, Ryan Charles. But Porton, Porton and Bath now sharing possession by kicking it back to each other. Just as I say, that um, um, 
Charles plays it a neat ball down to um, to Kerry Morgan. Morgan, who's um, kept onto the kept hold of the ball for um, for a while, um, to get it back to Rollo. Now um, we switch over to Ball. Ball brings it forward again. And now um, Bath attacking down their left hand side, trying to cut in, but that's going to be cleared by Osman. Launches a long ball upfield, and it will be um, that will go out for a throw into to Bath City. Oh no, it won't. It was kept in, and it was played back. Um, but um, Billings was um, sniffing around there, so that could have gone horribly wrong. Even though Bath did manage to keep the ball in, and the ball uh, goes across. Davidson is looking for Kerry Morgan. Morgan doesn't spring the offside trap on that occasion, and he did play it well. Morgan twisting. He's got two important players in front of him and Davidson does well um, for, to ricochet the ball out and it will go out for a, a throw in um, um, to, um, to, to Bath but Bath will Portland have still got some defending to do here at the end of the um, at the end of this first half and um, as if by magic when I say the end of the first half the referee um, does um, does bring uh, matters to a halt now I'll go to Mark first Mark um, one all here at Winterfield Road who do you think is going to be the happier of the managers going in at half time I'd probably think it'd be Bath City manager, to be honest. Um, again, although they didn't start very well and obviously went a goal down, I think their response since that has been very good. Um, the goal was maybe a bit fortunate, but you take what you can get in football. Um, and since then, I think they've pushed Bolton back and been probably the, the better side. Um, obviously, a bit lucky Bolton on a few occasions with getting offside decisions. So obviously, you win some, you lose some. Um, but Bolton need to do a little bit more second half. Um, I think we'll probably see similar similar pattern in the second half it'll be t- for 20 minutes it'll probably be quite even but then Bath City's fitness should probably shine through so we were expecting both sides to be ringing the changes in the second half I mean when, when we look at the um, when we look at the Porton bench um, um, I'm trying to I'm looking for the name of Nick McCootie which isn't there but we have got the likes of Dan Cleverly um, and, and, and indeed Brandon Barnes who's been in good form um, just uh, as you say we, we would expect the higher division side to um, um, to perhaps um, 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 show their class as time tells but um, Nick Bunyard does have some he does have some um, cards to play in the second half doesn't he? Yeah exactly I think we'll look, if you look probably through Portland's team um, probably five or six of them haven't played 90 minutes for quite a, lot, a long time so probably the last 10-15 minutes of that half showed when Bath did push Portland back and uh, were the better side um, you've got Brandon Barnes, Craig Lotston, Stuart Pearson, Dan Cleverley and Dan Cottle's a very good young player as well. So there are people who can come on and uh, hopefully change the game. Right then, Mark, thank you very much for your company in this half. Um, we should look forward to you re- rejoining us in the second half. You can go and warm up and have a cup of tea. And before I relieve um, Andrew from his duty, um, Bath will have come here expecting a game, but did they expect to go in one all at half-time? I think it's pretty much as, as Mark said. Bolton started the, the brighter of the two after the Bath City goal. They re-exerted themselves a little bit. If you look at what really is the difference between these two sides, two leagues apart from each other, I think the difference is when the Bath players get the ball, if they're under pressure, they have that ability to look up and just knock it into space. They just buy that little bit more time for themselves, just that little bit more skill on the ball. And, and that's really what told for the latter stages of that half. I think City, they'll feel quite happy with, with 1-1. Uh, they'll look to to press on a little bit in the second half down the slope. They've got some folk on the bench they can bring on and, uh, you know, I think they'll be quite happy with that scoreline at half-time. So we would expect the Bar City changing room to be um, sort of much the same, well, the instructions to be much the same, keep that going for the second half and, and uh, they'll be looking for their class to tell in the final quarter. Yeah, well, at halftime, there'll be the usual things in the chaining room. You know, one or two of them will be doing the telegraph crossword. They'll be discussing Kierkegaard philosophy, uh, as normally happens at halftime in the Bath City change room. Don't forget, we've got one of the most intelligent midfields in non-league football. There's, there's a number of degrees in there, a few well-educated guys. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's not a, a, a cup of Horlicks or a glass of Oval team for them. No, it's more the cut and thrust of intellectual rigour at halftime. Yeah, I'm half expecting Pat Nevin to come out in the second half of Bath. Uh, Andrew? Thank you very much for your for your company in the first half. I shall let you go and warm up, um, and uh, we look forward to hearing some more from you in the uh, in the second half. Now I'm inundated with guests here. Eloise is doing a fantastic job. Um, before we um, uh, we have a chat with um, with John Pike, the chief executive of the Somerset FA, uh, and of course we should remember this is the this is the Somerset Premier Cup, and we'll have a chat with Dave Bissick, who I know is itching to get back into the boardroom, warm up, and have a cup of tea. But Dave, um, I think uh, although um, although it's one all, and perhaps we would prefer it to have been 1-0 to Porton going in at half-time. Actually, on balance, um, you've got to be happy with that half of football. 
Yeah, I, I, I suppose uh, that's a fair reflection of the play at the moment. Um, it's been limited chances both ends. Um, we scored a good go early on, and um, unfortunately, a, a player was two yards offside, missed by the the linesman. But uh, nevertheless, uh, the goal stands. Um, but all in all, yeah, if uh, if you'd have said before the start of the game that we'd be one-one at half time and in with a good shout for the second half, we got.